Three, two, one. Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy, and I've got WT online. Are you there? I'm here. How are you doing? Should we go with WT or you got a real name that you want to use or you do the WT thing? I, I usually go by WT. Uh, other people call me Wayne, but uh, for all my <laughs> marketing and everything, I, WT just kind of sticks out. People, they always ask, oh, what does that mean? <laughs> That's right. You got to figure it out. <laughs> Like Prince, yeah. he ended up being formally known as and ended up being a symbol. That's pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what part of the world are you in? So I'm in uh, London, Ontario, which is about two hours from Detroit, but in Canada. Okay. Just, you know, I've been seven miles from Canada. I did a, a magic gig up there for a, a school system, and I was seven miles, and I never went across the border. So Canada, oh, okay. I've never been. <laughs> Okay. Been to Thailand and Brazil and Jamaica and Costa Rica and Bali. Uh, and I haven't been to Canada. <laughs> eh? I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota, so it's yeah, it's close. So you, yeah, it's very close. <laughs> neighbors. So you yeah. married and got kids and that kind of stuff, or wow, yeah, great. yeah, I have, I have four kids, married, and uh, my wife's an entrepreneur too. So we we have that synergy, so it works out pretty pretty good for us. Yeah, it's a different world, isn't it? Uh, the entrepreneurial. It is. I've been self-employed all my life, and my wife was a Spanish teacher at the University of Minnesota, and then she she did that for like thirty years, and she got tired of it, and she wanted to start her own deal, and pretty impressive because she's coaching now, and a, a wow. coach is a teacher, so she yeah. basically did the same thing, but she did that. It was pretty cool. Yeah, no, it is. It's an awesome lifestyle. But it's a different mindset. I'd like. That's that used that word is used a lot, and I think a lot of people don't really know what it is. Um, mm -hmm. Like I was listening to Ty Lopez, and he was talking about the kind of person that will drive around the city to get a cheaper price on gas. Okay, yeah. You know, it's his mindset yeah. trying to save a penny when you should yeah. be focused on saving dollars. You know. Exactly. Yeah. Is yeah. that part of what I, you teach? Is the mindset? Yeah. So my my thing is uh, having the mindset to find the solutions instead of focusing on the problem, you find sure. the solutions and build the confidence. I really teach people how to build confidence to be authentic in what they do and really reach for their goals and, you know, move in the direction of their dreams. There's a couple of guys. I think they're over in London, England, UK. Mm -hmm. And uh, their thing is a solution focus. Okay. It's a totally different yeah. thing because if you focus on the problem, it's the thing, what is it, Einstein that said you can't solve a problem that with the same mind that created it? Yeah. yeah. You have to think outside the box or erase the box, right? Yeah, exactly. So and how and it's not doing? easy. Uh, I've been doing so since 2013 uh, is about what I've been doing, the uh, like um, business consulting and, and really starting to focus on bringing mindset into business uh, but I got into that just before that like around 2012 when I was learning about law of attraction so I try to put the action in the law of attraction and really try to bring it into the business world yeah I interviewed a bunch of those guys from the secret okay so yeah it's fun talking to those kind of people because you got yeah. a lot of people think that you can think it and then it's just like pops into existence yeah yeah be patient and then it's, it's miraculous of what will happen when you can just focus like that yeah Armor. yeah like the secret is is like the commercial for a law of attraction so it's just talking about the results but it's, it doesn't really tell you how you can actually do it because there's a lot more to it than than the movie yeah there was a lot of controversy about that movie because they didn't really get into the meat of it you know yeah yeah They've since then, I think they did another version or something like that or something that kind of explained it in more detail. But, mm -hmm. but speaking of the law of attraction, that's how I manifested my wife because I had another relationship that didn't go so good. And I was, mm -hmm. looked on my old computer and I saw this short story that I wrote and it was yep. her. It was, ex it was a description <laughs> of her. And I thought, do over, do the Etch-a-Sketch thing, you know, no, <laughs> <laughs> I get a similar story. That's how I met my wife after a bad relationship. I really, I wrote out all the things that I wanted in a partner. Yeah. And, and then she 
appeared like six months later. <laughs> exactly. You just got to be patient and you don't know how it's going to happen. The way that my situation was, I, I produced trade shows and I was doing this okay. show that had an honor the earth art gallery in it. And she got designated by a, a, someone else to do the project. And that's how we met. So wow. I had no yep. intention of connecting with anybody and all of a sudden, ta-da. So yep. <laughs> mind's a powerful thing, the mindset. So you're doing good work teaching people that kind of thing. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm trying to teach them that exact thing. There's patience, persistence, perseverance. And nothing happens instantly. So you have to put the work in and then enjoy the journey. And focus. Yeah, focus. That's my biggest challenge. Like I see shiny yeah. objects all over the place. I have a hard time focusing. <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, I find is a huge benefit right now with everything that's going on in the world. Is everybody had time to really sit down and focus on what's important yeah. and what things can I let go? What's not serving me anymore? And where where is the direction I want to go for the next, you know, five six years? So do you think that this little situation, this pandemic lockdown thing, it sort of forced people to reflect and kind of rethink what they really want? I, I really do. Um, all the people that I've been dealing with, that's, they've all been going through the same thing where you find some of the things you were chasing, you didn't really know why you're chasing. It was almost like a fear of missing out, that FOMO thing, where you just wanted to be in all the places where everybody else is being but it wasn't really helping you to grow and to, to get to where you were trying to go. Well, ironically, I've had a challenge focusing and um, I, my background's in the event industry. So my wife is trying to keep me focused on events and yep. my, my mantra was focus on focus. Okay. <laughs> Stay focused on events. So I created a business around events, hospitality, travel, and tourism. Okay. I just finished the expo March 3rd mm -hmm. and then this thing happened. Yeah. And you know where the hospitality and the travel and the tourism and the event world is. Yeah. Gonzo. So I've retooled all of my stuff because it gave me that opportunity to kind of clear my thoughts and I yeah. retooled everything. I want to do online marketing where I can run stuff from my phone and be mobile and have time freedom. That's what I really, yeah. really want. But I was going mm -hmm. into that old pattern. So okay. how do you, uh, like coach people on old patterns. I'm assuming if someone wants to get in business and all of a sudden they go, you know, I had this job and I don't want to start a business because I won't get a paycheck every Friday. Yeah. So what I do is I, I really look at, okay, what is your definition of success? What is it that you, like what you just said, you know, what, what do you want to actually experience when you're, when you see this thing really working? And then what I always tell people is, don't quit your day job or make sure you have at least a, a side job because it's going to take a lot of money to, <clears throat> to build your business from scratch. Even though you, you might have a lot of money or if you have an investor, there's a lot of things you need to know about how investments work. Yeah. But you really have to have um, some income coming in all the time because a lot of times people will, will jump into business thinking, well, they got all these clients and things are booming. But it might just be a seasonal business or your, your whole business strategy, the way that you work somebody through your pattern might only uh, take three months. And then what happens? Where are you getting your next clients from? Right. So it, it's really to understand, because I think people scale out too quickly. They want to be uh, big and independent too fast. And then uh, they run out of steam and run out of money. And then they feel like a failure because they had a, a peak of success, but they couldn't maintain it. Sure. Well, those are some wise words because uh, that's what happens is when someone's first getting into a business, they get all excited and there's that, yeah. <laughs> that, that passion, that energy and oh, so excited. And then all of a sudden they find out the reality. It's kind of a good analogy or actual experiences out in Hollywood, California. Actors mm -hmm. and actresses go out there and they get like one gig and make 20 grand and think, hey, this is great. I'm going to buy a BMW. Yeah. buy that bmw and then all of a sudden where's the next gig where's the next gig where's the next gig and then all of a sudden they're not doing so good you yeah yeah gotta so there's different seeds. strategies that we talk about doing where you can farm out some of your your stuff so that you know because part of being in business is hiring people but it mm -hmm. could be just contract work but you want to um, hire some people that 
can help you run your business while you're still doing other things. And those other things might be working your, your full-time job or a part-time job, but um, really getting it to the point where you have, you know, residual income coming in and you don't need that part-time job anymore. So I talk about looking at, okay, make your mainstream and then look at other uh, income streams. Cause you need to have a few different income streams before you let go of a, a full-time income. Yep, absolutely. Uh, like the, the funnel, you gotta have a lot of different stuff pouring into the funnel somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Totally get it. Well, that's very cool. Do, do you work in any specific niches of people that are going into business or you don't care? They can be a dentist, they could be a doctor, they could be a multi-level marketing person, they could be a fitness instructor. I, I mainly, so I mainly work with uh, the people that are doing stuff uh, online. Um, so a lot of like um, affiliate marketers. Oh, cool. I work with uh, entrepreneurs that are wanting to launch their own brand or their own product. Uh, a little bit of real estate people. Um, but really, people, whoever identifies themselves as an entrepreneur, that's, that's the kind of person I want to work with. So small businesses and independent people. So the affiliate model is where I'm at right now because it's the okay. idea of not having to ship a bunch of stuff to Amazon and not have to do a bunch of barcodes and you just sell yep. the product. And I'm, I'm trying to focus on membership subscriptions. So there's the recurring thing and yep. the kind of stuff that's scalable where it's got a low point of entry and, and move up. And if it's affiliate stuff, you don't have to worry about shipping anything. You don't have to worry about customer service or returns. Yeah, it's a great model great a great way to to get going get things started um, there's a little bit of uh, you know red flags that you have to watch for but uh, you know once you really understand what you're trying to do and I find a lot of people they don't uh, they don't get it, do enough research in the product they're they're pitching mm -hmm. and so sometimes they get bit by that like I worked with one person and they asked me to uh, to join their I guess their their, their launch and the whole thing didn't work properly. And I had to tell them like, like this is a, a bad customer experience. So you need to work through that, get that working first, and then they'll come back to me and let me know and I'll try it again. Yep. Like I said, but if you're out there promoting it, thinking it's awesome because you love the product, but the, the back office part doesn't work properly, you're gonna have problems. And then right away, people start thinking scam. And then yeah, exactly. take right down that. <laughs> yeah, I've been through some of that stuff and it's easy to, uh, you know, outsource to somebody on Fiverr or something, they have a real impressive looking landing page. And if there's nothing on the back end of it, kind of like buying a car with no engine in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. So do you do um, like events? Do you do like talks and seminars and workshops and things like that? Yeah, so, so my main thing, what I do is I have a one chapter book series that I created mm -hmm. and, uh, each book is only one chapter long, solving one business problem at a time. So what I do is I promote that. That's, that's like my main passion. And then I, I do speaking events and uh, I'll do workshops and things based around you know, the mindset of that book and helping people to, to build solutions off of uh, the things they learned in the book. So the books are mainly for you to solve a problem and take action right away. Yeah, I looked a little bit on Amazon. I saw uh, a couple of them on there. I forgot the title. What, what, throw some titles so, out. So one of them is called The Harsh Truths, and that's really about starting a business. There's another one, The Lonelypreneur is doing really that's well one, right now. That's the one yeah. I was thinking about. Because yeah. I like to, I'm not a real people person, but I do like going to networking events and kind of observe people. Okay. But now yep. with this pandemic thing, there are no networking events, so I'm feeling that lonelypreneur thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Got to... <laughs> got to do stuff like this where you actually connect with humans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's like a big part of the book is really getting used to being on video and, and just uh, having conversations with people, even if it's a, a Zoom meeting call mm -hmm. or a networking call. It's like just be, be comfortable with talking and, and having real conversations. A lot of people are scared because they don't want to fumble yeah. their words or they don't want to say the wrong thing. But it's... You know, if you were in a live event, you'd do that anyway. So what's the difference if you're in the video? That's what's fascinating to me that as soon as that camera is there and there's that lens, all of a sudden the deer in the headlights <laughs> scared thing. It's kind of weird because it's really no different than just at an event, except for it's documented, you know? Yeah. And it is a real big issue for a lot of people. 
for whatever reason, they just don't want to be on camera. Well, they say, I think that uh, public speaking is feared more, uh, more than death by most people. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And that was something I didn't really want to do, but just because of all the, the things that I, that I do, I had to learn how to, so I had to do Toastmasters and then I yeah. ended up, I speak on stage multiple times a year now. But at first, I mean, I didn't want to learn how to public speak at all. I didn't want to be in front of people. Yeah, I saw one of your videos on YouTube. That's your, it looked like you're almost at a comedy club or something. Yeah, yeah. So there's like these uh, called Mo Mondays and they're motivational Monday events. And they're usually at a club and uh, they have like five or six speakers and you, you tell a story about something that you overcame and you know, it's really about positive mindset stuff. Yeah. And I usually do use a lot of humor to get people laughing because I, I like to have fun. I mean, that's my, my main uh, goal in anything I do is really having fun. You got to. I call it edutrainment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, that's a little bit of everything there. Yeah, it yeah. can't be a, a stick in the mud, as they say. Yeah, exactly. Well, Wayne, I don't like to do these too long because people have that commodity of time. And yeah. uh, I like to be able to give them the opportunity to digest it all. And then what I do is I pop it up to YouTube and propagate it out. But before mm -hmm. we go... Do you have something you can offer people? Do you have like a, a discount code or something for a book or do you have like a little quiz or something like that you can offer? Yeah. So if you go to my, uh, my Instagram it's w.t.hamilton on Instagram, um, I have a free PDF. It is for mindset. So really building your mindset for success. And uh, there's uh, some MP3s that are in that package as well. So if they go there and they go to that link, they can download that for free. So Instagram, w.t.hamilton. Yeah. You can find you on Insta. On Insta, yeah. That's my main uh, social media. Well, that's another interesting thing on the whole business world is a lot of people go, I need a website. Not necessarily. You need a personality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Hey. I don't I've never been to Joe Rogan's website. Yeah. You know yeah Joe Rogan is, a $100 million <laughs> yeah. dollar guy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's a lot, like a, a lot of people I follow. I've never checked their website out. Exactly. You follow the people, 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 it's a people business, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, WT, if you got something else coming up down in the future, you got, if you're ever in Minneapolis, please look me up. And uh, if you got something else you're launching or something, we can get back mm -hmm. on another one of these and we'll propagate it out there for you. So I appreciate you taking the time today. Yeah, I appreciate it too. And, uh, I'm a big Prince fan, so I'm hoping to, to go tour his, his house tour at some point. It was an amazing thing when that happened. I'm in the event business, people often ask me, they say, so how long does it take to put together blah, blah, blah? Mm -hmm. And I say, Prince did it, and he was dead. He threw a huge party <laughs> on the First Avenue. Yeah. It was huge. Tense. Yeah. It was amazing. So, yeah, yeah. that, that uh, got me emotional in that mm. situation it was pretty bizarre yeah well definitely come on out we'll go out to the paisley park together <laughs> yeah that sounds great okay cool well, thanks uh thank thanks you Reggie, uh, brad this was an awesome uh, awesome time